Before we begin, thank you very much to Raichu Overlord Ben for becoming a Patreon contributor over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Really helps keep the channel going, helps the push go, and hey, it's actually getting a little bit close to that uh, first tier, the review, the episode by episode review of Beast Wars. 52 more videos on top of everything else I'm doing. That's, <laughs> it's, it's, I was going to make a joke about it, but that, that actually would be kind of cool to do. So, I haven't done this since January, and people have been asking me for it, so I thought, let's take the camera around the toy shop and do a little bit of a tour, because I showed the place off early this year, but that was before I started working here, it was before I started rearranging everything the way I want it to go. So things look a lot different now, and things are uh, a little bit more focused and organized. So, and we've gotten in some really cool things. So I'm just going to wander around for this episode of the uh, Toy Store Life and show you what the place looks like. And yes, for those still thinking it's a green screen, no, no, like, no, see, like actual stuff I can touch. See, like stuff I can touch, like... I actually manage a toy store. It's not just a special effect. So here's the site you get when you first walk in. So all the good stuff over on the left and right as soon as you get here. This is Tony. Tony's our bouncer. We say that because everyone likes, uh, unintentionally bounces into him. See? So for the left, if you go on the right, Tony is guarding over the Marvel Legends section. So you can see all the ones there hanging up on the side. We got some more expensive ones over here, and then we got the larger scale, as well as the multi-packs. Lots and lots of different Marvel to choose from, which is always nice. We got in a really beautiful collection of Spawn figures. Like, all different kinds of eras from the like, classic McFarlane toy line. I always love the look and style of these. I've never been huge on Spawn, but just the sculpt and size of the figures that McFarlane like to put out has always been like super cool to me. So if we keep going, let's just keep going down the wall because now we're going to get into the Star Wars Black Series first, which is a little bit thin right now, but we're still hanging in. We've got the helmets up there too. And then as we go, there's a whole bunch of just random stuff that doesn't have its own section. But as we go, down the wall it's going to get older and older so we've got revenge of the sith figures right there we got clone war multi-packs saga collection there all the way down we've got all those blue cards into power of the jedi power of the force and it's uh interesting sculpting and yeah like all the different vehicles and play sets we got up there the biggest collection of Star Wars stuff you're going to find in Southwest Florida. That's what we like to say because it's true. We've not found, found any place even remotely close. In fact, it doesn't even stop there. If we look on this side, here is a collector's case full of really cool stuff, including the vintage Darth Vader still on card. That is a very precious, precious piece. And if I turn around, it's Barbie. Admittedly, like, admittedly, that's a little bit weird, but you know you know who buys the Barbie? The ones who buy the Barbie are the girls who are standing here at the counter waiting for their husband or boyfriend to start picking things up and actually pay for things. Who are just bored and looking around and going, oh, hey, look, Barbie. That's who buys the Barbie. So, you know, we, we, we keep, you know, so I think it makes a little bit of sense. So... Since we're already here, we'll show you the case. A whole bunch of different loose Pokemon packs down there. Building battle sets there. A few loose D&D miniatures and dice. I would love to have more D&D stuff in here, of course, but we don't have much clientele for them. Big price tag, but who boy, look at those. Vintage Gym Hero packs. I opened up so many of those. So many. More packs there. We got tins and binders on the back. First partner packs. Big box sets, theme decks, everything, everything. And the TCG wall is an entire corner because here's all of our Magic the Gathering stuff. We got Magic packs going back 10 years. Try to keep a lot of different editions in stock at once. We got a little bit of Yu Gi Oh! because my Yu Gi Oh! section keeps getting raided every week. Before we come down to the rest of the wall, 
We'll go down here and we'll look at a little bit more Star Wars. We got some special box sets that are very rare. We have a vintage model of the Imperial Shuttle down there. In this glass case, there's a whole bunch of weird random stuff. So we've got things like Mighty Max sets, vintage stuff, a few more, more uh, expensive Star Wars figures, higher demand, much rarer. Same thing down there. Here's the Lull, here's the, uh, the Lars Homestead. I tell people if they buy this, they have to provide their own lighter fluid. Uh, a Slave Leia. Of course, you know, they don't make those anymore. We got another one there, the three and three quarter inch in the back. And then there's like a couple of random He-Man horses and uh, Prince Adam. It's the, it's the meme Prince Adam that does like from the what's going on video. We do have more actual He-Man. Here's all the vintage stuff. It's not in good shape because no loose He-Man figure is in good shape, but they all at least, you know, somewhat function. Carded G.I. Joe's from Russia. Figure that one out. And then a whole bunch of vintage loose G.I. Joe's there in the glass case. We keep going on. We have loose Marvel Legends as well, which are really good for parents so they can actually buy their kid a Marvel superhero toy and not worry about, like, destroying a uh, sealed collectible in any case. So, win-win, I feel. Now, let's look at the back wall, and we can see a few different uh, special figures. From the McFarlane stuff, we have the original Malbolgia, as well as what's called Party Angela. Uh, there's a variant where she's supposed to have a panty line painted on between her crotch. On this, uh, uh, it's not there. <laughs> Thus, Party Angela. I'm not the one who called it that. That's just what they called it. Alright, so our last Force FX lightsaber, a whole bunch of Spider-Man Marvel Legends. Those are always high demand. The uh, Primal Rage figures are still here. Super cool, super cool. Going down, we have a couple of, or just a few, three Vintage Beast Wars figures left. But we have some Vintage Ninja Turtles, which are super nice. And then a whole bunch of really expensive WWE Elite figures. These are, like, the rarest ones. And... Some of them I understand. The CM Punks, yes. The Macho Man, yes. I understand that. I don't know why Finley... I don't know why Finley, other than, like, when else does he ever get an action figure? So, that's the back wall behind the counter. And then if we continue along the wall, we get to the massive wall of Funko Pops. I know it's not for everybody. I know, air quote, real toy collectors don't consider Funko Pops toys, but these have been huge business. Like, these are only surpassed by our Pokemon cards in sales. Uh, by far the thing we turn over the most. So, uh, yeah, this is big business for us. So we take it seriously, and we keep the best selection in the area. And then we have even more over here. We're back to Tony, by the way. More over here, and I keep them sorted and separated, so you can actually tell. Like, here's, like, all the retro toy pops. So we have Operation, G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, all of those different Funko. So I actually keep a good watch over what my shelves look like and everything being nice and sorted. And then we have, like, all the hardest-to-get figures. Everything in here is north of $60. There's, a, like, all of those are really rare high-demand pops. So let's go through some of these uh, gondolas, these, like, these individual, individual displays here. So if we go on this side, here's our WWE Elite collection. We've got tons of really cool ones in stock. Lots of really popular figures and some not. So I think I have an Undertaker for every stage of his career. Like here's the last era of him. We have the Dead Man, uh, the American Badass, uh, the Vintage Takers back there. All different forms of Undertaker. Moving over here, we got a few more random, uh, random uh, Marvel toys that didn't really fit in anywhere else. Over to our DC end cap. Not a whole lot of uh, DC sales go on in this store, so we don't we keep it a little bit, but not a terrible amount. And then we have NECA stuff, which is a lot of horror. This is mostly a horror movie section, so we do have like gigantic Freddy Krueger, etc. Lots of Jasons. More more available after Chris after uh, Halloween than I thought we would have, but this is where most of our NECA product is because NECA collectors are nuts. We have a little bit of anime in Dragon Ball Z. We need to get more of this. 
because I know we had a lot of people asking us for Gundam, Dragon Ball, Naruto, etc. Uh, distribution is not the easiest thing to get sometimes. G.I. Joe. All right. So the G.I. Joe stuff is mostly modern. Mostly modern. We got some multi-packs down there that are very nice. We got a, we got a Bishoujo, uh Scarlet down there, which is kind of creepy. A lot of stuff from Retaliation, because that stuff was very easy to come by. But we have some nice, like, vintage style stuff. You know, there's, like, the classic foot tall size, uh, one six scale. But with the, uh, the, uh, real American hero characters. Those are nice to see. Here's my section. Here's my section. We do not have nearly as many Transformers as I would like. Every time someone says, hey, I'm gonna bring you Transformers, vintage G1 package, etc., uh, they never show back up. So, that's a little bit of a letdown. So, you got, like, a little weird mix of different lines and different styles. Where, of course, I would love to have an entire wall of Transformers, but I'll take what I can get. A little bit more random stuff down here. So, we have Halo. We have, actual, we have a bunch of loose Halo figures from the McFarlane era. A couple of random uh, DC figures I didn't have any space for. We have a Waterworld toy. That might be the most random piece in this whole thing. The water world actually had toys. So we go back through onto the other end cap, we will find some vintage Power Rangers, the original Lord Zed, as well as the small Lord Zed. Looking quite cool and brilliant. We have a bunch of the old uh, uh, Bandai of America version figures, so they're all buffed up in Hercules. Yep, this is another section I would love to have more of. I did, did I show you the Pudgy Pig? I show you we have the original Pudgy Pig. Here we also have this. Because Camp Laszlo had one piece of merchandise, those that bag of plushies. Super rare. Super rare. Looking over on this side now, we have a bunch of me uh, uh, video game stuff from Mortal Kombat, Fortnite, Contra, Magic the Gathering figures, Halo, Mega Man. Just all just random miscellaneous uh, stuff we can find that's video game based. And then we have a sci-fi wall, which is mostly Star Trek. Those classic uh, Next Generation figures, which were uh, pretty famously overproduced. And we have uh, just a million of them. But we've also got some Ghostbusters in here. we got a little bit of Battlestar Galactica and X-Files. So, nice bit of variety in this wall. We have some very random stuff over on this section, where we have our Fuzzy Kong. It's been here for a while. Stoop Kid's afraid to get off his stoop. We have in-action figures from Clerks, which I think is funny. A vintage Predator figure from the 90s. Thundercats. They made dolls for the Drew Carey show. I know not why, but they exist and I have them for sale. We have a Ninja Turtle section, which has a lot of the 2000, uh, 2012 series, I want to say. Uh, still really good toys. Still really like. Uh, we have some of the NECA turtles as well, both the uh, movie style and the cartoon style. Couple vintage figures there. Doesn't be the vintage ones on the wall. Scooby Doo on this end cap. Got the van has Freddy in it, and then the rest of the cast. We got some vintage Popeye, a little bit of My Little Pony, and some girls' toys because that goes over into the Barbie section on the other side of the wall. We are located in Florida, so we do have a legally mandated Disney section. Not a whole lot to it. A lot of Kingdom Hearts, because Kingdom Hearts is always, uh, always a sure bet. Big Buzz Lightyear, though. This one, I think everyone hits the buttons on. <laughs> and I, ju I just hear this one throughout the day. We have a little bit over here. A couple random collectible figures that I didn't have really any other space for. But we do have a tiny bit of Lego down here. With the, mini, with the Series 2 minifigs for Disney, as well as a Lego movie set. And then over here, another section I would love to see bigger someday. We have our gaming section and Dungeons & Dragons. I would love to have a whole section of this, but I can never justify the space. Uh, so, this is what we have for now. Maybe at some point it'll grow. I think with that, you've pretty much taken the tour and seen just about everything in the shop. It, it's a small-ish shop, but it's dense, you know. There is just a lot of stuff hiding in every little nook and cranny of this place. And I think, like, a fantastic variety. 
Of course, I would always love to have a little bit more, but you know, we will take whatever we can get. I'm trying to get in any last minute thing. All right. I showed this off on Twitter. I also have my, like, this is like my little uh, command station during the day. But this is where I keep uh, Gokaiger toys at, that came in and an Ultraman set that's been here forever. So, also awesome. So, thank you guys for joining me on this toy store life. This is where I spend half of my week. And you know what? For me, the toy obsessed man that I am, I could do worse. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.